On the 10th of December 1959, the uprising in the old location in Vintuk shook the country and changed the destiny of the nation. It was in the start of the resistance against colonialism, but it was a defining moment in Namibian history that kick-started the struggle that would lead to the country's independence 30 years later. I must say that uh, it's been a long road to our freedom. We started even beyond 1959, when our people first made contact with the first people who came to our country from Germany. And I think since then, we have been walking a very, very long journey to reach our independence. Vintuk's central location and its water supply had always attracted people. It was a convenient stopover on the long journeys through the country. There are records of Urlam leader Jonker Afrikaner, who named the place Vintuk, settling at the strongest spring in 1849. The settlement grew into a structured city during the German colonial times of 1884 until 1915 and continued with the South African occupation after World War I. Affected by racial segregation policies, the indigenous people settled on the outskirts of the city. They inhabited a place that became known as the old location on the western side of Vintuk. Over the years, they built houses, grew crops, some owned plots. Although naturally organized into various ethnic groups, this was formally entrenched in 1937. As the city of Vintuk began to burst at its seams in the 1950s, the South African administration made plans to move the residents to an area further away, offering them brick houses, electricity, water and sewerage systems. They were not allowed to own new houses, but rather had to rent them from the municipality. In 1957, they restricted the brewing of traditional homemade beer, curbing an income on which the women of the households had become dependent. Municipal beer halls were implemented as a substitute. Adding fuel to the flames, the police conducted random raids, checking for illicit brewing operations. The restrictions and increasing police brutality caused Anna Mungunda and hundreds of women to march to South West Africa House in Vintuk on the 8th of December 1959 in protest. The women organized themselves, including Mungunda, who was part of that women delegation, to visit the headquarters of the Governor General of South Africa in town. They went to that office and walked into the garden, started demanding the recognition of their rights as human beings, as part of the international community, and also to accept the fact that the International Human Rights Day must be recognized by the South African government because that is a day that actually celebrates their rights as well. Their grievances fell on deaf ears as the administrator refused to acknowledge their presence or accept their petition. When the women came back and uh, made demonstrations at the Bauka beer hall of Mkomboti, the police and the soldiers were sent by the authorities to the Bauka beer hall to try to quell down the demonstration of our people there. It was at this strategic moment that history turned its heavy head. Stones were thrown at the police, who responded by arresting three people. When I received the phone call, I listened and I ran to the United Nations to actually lobby delegations to tell them and made them aware that a very serious situation is developing in Southwest Africa. It is difficult in hindsight to know whether stones flew first or shots were fired, but decades of domination and repression had reached an explosive climax. The mayhem lasted until shortly after midnight when an armoured army vehicle arrived on the scene and calm was restored. By that time, civilians, including Anna Mungunda, had lost their lives and over 50 people had been injured. Mungunda seized a petrol container and started pouring it into the uh, one of the uh, administrator's car and the soldiers 
saw her and then she fired at her, killed her on the spot. In the following years, the inhabitants were forced to leave the old location. Residents were evacuated to the new site and bulldozers leveled the houses. The people named the new township Katatura, a place where we will never feel settled. Times had however changed and the armed liberation struggle had begun, along with a handful of others, founding father Dr. Sam Nyoma, who would become Namibia's first president, left the country to garner support overseas for what would become the South West African People's Organization. It would take another 30 years before the country gained its independence. Today, 60 years later, on the 10th of December, which is both International Human Rights Day and Namibia's Women's Day, we commemorate the day that sparked the struggle and played such a significant role in Namibian history. And we remember those who gave their lives for freedom.